where events of the past week have again focused attention on our slipshod state highway laws. Laws which allow a corrupt highway commission to award contracts to anyone they choose without the obvious benefits of competitive steel bidding. The most flagrant example is our recently completed Governor Clifton Highway. The irony of fate, Clarence Buckman was killed on his own rotten highway. How long are the people of this state going to tolerate these corrupt conditions? Both the evil and its cure are to be found today at Clarence Buckman's funeral. Vincent Cushing, the evil, head of the state's crooked political machine, John Webb, brilliant young attorney, and his partner, Russ Sampson, the two men who, if they would, could cure the evil. You know something? This is the first time Clarence has ever been on the level. Better get a couple more of Cushing and Webb. Well, why so many of the same two guys? Listen, thick kid. the next time those two get together, they may be tough to photograph, because one of them will probably be in the box. Tell me something, Cushing. What do you pave the highways with? Tapioca? Yeah, we had raisins to make it hard. Sounds awfully rich to me. This heat is killing me. You should complain. Take a class. Stand at ease, pal. I'll go in and put the finishing touches on Senator Scott. Right. Well, Sam, have you looked into your little crystal ball? Yes, but it didn't tell me who's behind you. Sam, coming from me, is going to be a shock. But this thing is honest. My clients want just a fair crack at all the highway profits from now on. Under the present setup, with Cushing in full control of the commission, all the road contracts go to his clique. Yeah, but fighting Cushing's political machine is a pretty big order, John. Just where do we begin? With an amendment to the Barry Highway Bill? simply stipulates that all road contracts from now on be led on the basis of sealed bids, giving everybody an even break. Of course, you realize that all my clients are definitely interested in your campaign for the United States Senate. You're a mighty convincing talker, John. Sam, you'll be in there pitching for a great cause. Yeah, but I'm not the crusader I was at 35. However, I'll try squeezing into the old armor again. I suppose Cushing will sick his new gazette on me. So what? The only thing smelly about your past are those cigars. And you can change your brand when you get to Washington. What goes, Mr. Mudd? Well, Scott's gone through for us, but we have to do all the dirty work. I shall polish up my best brass knuckles. I think you better. It's gonna be that kind of a fight, and you know Cushing's gang, no holes are barred. For the people. What a hundred thousand dollar retainer fee. That ain't sharp liver. Look, you better go out and dig up all the dirt you can on the highway commission. Find out how they get their cuts from Cushing and check yeah. our thoughts with the other states and see if you can get some fireworks. Same old Johnny. Alma! Honey, you just stepped off a magazine cover. He knows I'm a sucker for a pretty speech. Matter, can I get rid of you? Nope. Well, I'm sorry. This is Russell, um... Samson, remember? Uh, Samson, Alma Brandon. It's my partner. In a business way. How do you do? How do you do? Honey, you certainly look gorgeous. Whatever did happen to you and me? I won't listen if you don't want me to. Oh, it's perfectly all right. There's nothing private about yesterday's light of romance. Light of romance? I never got the first base with you. Now I suppose it's too late, huh? Yeah, that's right. The only thing any good warmed over is spaghetti. How about a fast drink? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm meeting a gentleman friend. And it's not Cushing. Oh, yes, it is. Coming to his party tonight? Why don't you? I'll tell Vincent I invited you. No, thanks. I'll mix my own Mickey Finn. Yes. What time's the party? Any time after nine at the Riviera. I'll be there. You'll know me. I'll be wearing an armored car. <laughs> you feel a bump, bump, bumpin' in my heart. I know the symptoms every time they start. Feel as though I'm reeling round the phone. Oh! 
girls around tonight. They make me nervous. You haven't any cause for alarm? Hey, Captain. Look at the starboard bow. Very interesting. Take a look. Shall we pick it up? My eyes. Wait a minute. What about Alma? Keep my place in line, will you, Pappy? Whoa! I'm a Mustang. You like plenty of soda? Yes, thanks. Don't throw him out. I invited him in a weak moment. I know you're grieving for Clarence. Move over and agree with him. In case you misjudge all this levity, the after-funeral feast is a legitimate custom dating back to feudal days. Mm -hmm. You've grabbed off a lot of feudal customs, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> come on, Johnny. You're missing out on something special. Sure. I'm in the mood for something special. <laughs> Once in a while, she goes a little flat. Not from where I stand. She'll be up with the other girls. Let's refuel. Hey, and you better have something cool. Listen, you, I got a complaint to make. This is a nice girl. How did she get in here? Even Cushing can make a mistake. Okay, you you got me wrong. I'm the clean-cut type. Crack of dawn, the early worm. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Johnny, what have you got against Simpson? The whole list. Start at the top. All right, I will. Number one, I'm a Bramer. Number two... Johnny, you're not reviving that tired old monster jealousy, are you? All right, you stick with Cushing. You'll wind up great. I'm looking for Alma Bramer. Oh, George Taylor, I recognize this now. Well, that's Cushing. Now she's here. Take it easy. She's my wife, and she's coming with me, or I'll ring her. Take it easy. Out of my way, Cordina. You certainly can pick him. How did I know I was marrying the face on the barroom floor? Who's now with a nickname for another 50 grand in the settlement? Might have come in handy for laying up those winter groceries. Good old Johnny. Always worrying about everybody but himself. Golden years are whizzing by, and what's happening to our Mr. Webb? <laughs> what do you mean? I need the love of some good woman? At that, I often wonder how you and I have worked out together. We might have been good for each other. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine me coming home with the evening paper? Meeting you at the gate of the rose-covered cottage with a gas spill on one hand and an apple pie in the other. <laughs> you know something? I used to make a swell apple pie. I bet you did. I like apple pie. Think you still know how to make it? I think so. I lost the recipe for a lot of things. Ah, you're just out of practice. Why can't I tell Johnny? Boat sail. <laughs> Generous, Pete. I was a chump to think you'd ever give me a tumble after you got a flash at that cushing back road. Look, there are very few things in my life that I really regret. One of them is the time I wasted on you. Cool off, Snow White. Now that you and me have a nice 
from hot to hot color. Hmm? What would you use? I must have guessed by this time that dancing is not quite my leg. Would you like to sit down? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I just love to sit. Come on. Come on, sit here. I'm so glad you like my number because, well, people don't know all the rehearsing people have to do. Now, for instance, this morning, I tried for over an hour just to hit the right note that couldn't make it. Now, you wouldn't believe that, would you? Oh, yes, yes, I would. You want to know something else? The girl I live with, no family or neither. Of course, it isn't a real name, and I call her Smelly Eddie, but it isn't such a good joke because her name is Nan either. But she does use a lot of perfume, and she's psychic. And she said, if I played my cards right, I could get to be a radio singer. And they just make barrels of dough, me. That's playing for money, and then I could save, and by the time I'm 21, I could have right. everything. How old did you say you were? 18. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, two months. Oh, I can remember my 15th birthday in a Long Island mansion. <gasps> my father threw me a coming out party. We were very rich millionaires then, and that was just uh, three years ago. So that makes me. Yeah. Yeah, 18 and two months. Well, what's the matter? <laughs> I like you. Now look, boss. Why don't you go out and get yourself a nice young college fella? You're just too young to decide who you like and who you don't like. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Must be like those fishing rods. Where if you catch anything too young, you have to throw them back in, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta throw them back. Now you can't date me up. That's right. Now I can't date you up. But I can date you up because you're over 21 and Eddie. No, that doesn't work out then. Look. He's only my lawyer. I'll get a new one in the morning. Vincent, I hope that isn't an order because I don't take them. Let go! Oh, let me go! I'm dumb! Let me go! Oh, that swine. Vincent, stop him. <laughs> Why, you big bully, you... <laughs> What's the matter with you? Heels, you're paralyzed? Call me tomorrow, Pete. I know a good dentist. Come on, Cinderella. Let's take off. What happened? Smallpox just cut in. Well, I didn't expect you to act like one of the Rover boys. That's what fascinates people. The many sides to my character. Maybe I'll show them all here sometime. Oh, wait a minute. Don't try anything funny. Remember, I'm sober. Gee, you were great. The rest of them were really scared. Good evening, Mr. Webb. You in early this morning, ain't you? Hello, Art. Mr. Webb, you been having words with somebody again? Hmm? Oh, no, Art, that's nothing. That's a little bite. Mr. Webb, you sure give your women folks a lot of wear and tear. Good night, Art. Good night, Mr. Webb. Now, Ken, what is? Oh, I like it. Oh. Forgot about my foot. Get down, big bully. All right. Uncle Johnny, take a look. My father had a room like this in our old plantation mansion in Virginia. But, of course, that was before we lost our million. I said your mansion was in Long Island. Well, that was the summer mansion. Oh, your dad had a lot of millions. Huh? Oh, yes, he had millions of them. I feel better after you have some coffee. Thanks for fixing my foot. <laughs> What a 
warm you. Why not cold? Hey. Oh. What's the matter? Put on your dress, will you? You've got a great big spot on your beautiful rug. Have you got any benzene? Look, puss. Will you put on your dress? You embarrass me. I had to take it off to find out where it was torn. Yeah, I know. You see, I could sew it up here, but then the seam would show. Oh. I could pink it in here, but, you know, then that would make it droop here. Well, that might be very becoming. Well, yes, but it would ruin the style of the dress. Well, you could sew it up here, maybe. Then I couldn't sit down. I ever had, too. I'm sure you're 18. Mm-hmm, and two months. Because my birthday was on the same day that Uncle Elmer busted a blood vessel. Right now, I know just how Uncle Elmer felt. Look, Puss, put the body in the dress, and I'll put you in the cab. Come on. You know, you might buy another dress. Wouldn't have to worry about those seams. They might not become an international issue. A hundred dollars! Boy, I like you. Will you put on the dress? All right. what you did. Do you want to knock it all crooked? Why not? Now, look, just because you took me to dinner a few times... Two times. ...and brought me a few drinks... You gallons. ...and give you the right to treat me like what? a... Now, what do I treat you like? Well, I don't like your nasty and your endo. And I don't have to hold still for such cracks, neither. Get me Mike Daly on the phone, will you? Please. Please. Oh, yes, Mr. Webb. He's here. for you, Mr. Daly. Oh, that's very gracious of you. Hello? I had a beef with that rat Cadena last night. Well, those little tomato about any Van Seymour involved. Brady might take it out on her. I'll tell her everything. Either no one gets rough with her. Well, is something I can do for you? Sharpen a few pencils or something? Now you made me forget what I came in for. Surprise! That was it. You'll just go crazy when you see the dress I put in. Look, Puss, I've got a lot of work to do. Oh, I'll bet you have. Nellie Annie says any man who can give a girl a hundred dollars just like that must keep his nose right to the grindstone. Well, she can snap her fingers better. You got a paper opener? Let me see here. Please. Do you want to see it on? Here, boy, take a minute. Boss, take it easy. Say, 
Hey, Johnny, I've got a date. Well, she's just showing me some things here. I can tell. I forgot to tell you, Mr. Smith's phone this morning. Oh. I'm glad you don't write those messages down, Miss Taylor. They might fall into the wrong hands. But with the country teeming with international spies. Here, hold this for me. Let me show you, because it will only uh, take uh, a minute. Look, will you cut it out? No. Embarrass me. Besides, I got an important phone call to make. Oh. Well, if you don't see a mark, how will I know if you like them or whether I have to take them back or whether I'll need a check or what I have to do? Hold it. Well, what do you mean a check? Well, you see, we spent the hundred dollars. And you know, Smelly Annie's sight. And she says, a man of your income wouldn't be seen dead meeting me in front of the place we were living in. So we moved to a new apartment, and you just love it, because even the stock were in the bathtub sit. I was worried about that. Here, let me show you. Puss! <laughs> Look, Puss. What? You just sit still for five minutes. Oh, but let me... I'm gonna go out and see if I can arrange it. Charge to come for you. I hate to be irrelevant, but this is missing. Oh, well, I'm just trying to keep in practice. Came up between of them, but turn up your hair, you rule. What was it today? Can't just get chance? Oh, it's a web. Web! Louder, I can almost hear. slip a time bomb in her lunchbox. Hi, Mabes. One punch web? Your exhibition paid dividends. Vincent and I quarreled over you, and this morning it cost him a gorgeous diamond bracelet to erase that famous Bramer scowl. Tonight? What for? I thought maybe you could drop by and add this to my insurance policy. Twelve. Around eight, I have a heavy date at nine. Bye, darling. Get a load of the lamb chop. One minute you're going around with me. The next minute you're not going around with me. You're going around with somebody else. Oh, you got me all wrong, Puss. Oh, ho. A trifler, eh? Now, if you prefer the outdoor, the clean cut type, I'll buy a drink. Wait a minute, I'll go with you. I want to read the afternoon papers. Come on, Shortcake. We're attracting a crowd. Gee. Ten gets you 50. When Cushing heard about that amendment, they had to scrape him off the ceiling. I see with the news gazette letting Scott have both barrels, one above the belt and the other below. Well, we expected that. Fortunately, the citizen has the civic spirit. Gave the amendment four stars. Oh, woo -hoo. Can I have a funny? Here's a picture of Senator Beery to start with. Mister. There's not enough gin in this Tom Collins. That's a lemonade, lady. Well, put some more sugar in it, then. Time's the rush. I got to grab a shave, go back to the office, and see about those policies and almonds. You know, this is a marvelous watch. Wakes me up in the morning, cooks my breakfast, darns my socks, boils my eggs. Make up those corny jokes, too, does it? What time is it? It's, uh... What do you expect from a watch? Everything? Mm -hmm. Keep your dress on, puss. Oh, I know where you're going. And don't come crawling back to me on your hands and feet. Carry on, Jim. Bye, Mr. Webb. You know, I used to like him.
I'll swear it if I have to smash every... Believe me, and I'll swear it. I'm a, a murderer in the uh, penthouse to the uh, a better arm. Uh, better arm. Right. Where's that, Captain? that to the arm of the law. You've been drinking. Resisting an officer, eh? Say, do you live here? Listen, Flatfoot. Either let go of that arm, arrest me, or get knocked into that jar of shrubbery. You're under arrest. Tell Captain Graves to come down a minute. I've caught a suspicious character. Oh, yes. What's the matter, Humboldt? Would they let you play? I stopped this man according to orders, Captain. He resisted and threatened to throw me right over that jar of shrubbery. That's not true, Humboldt. I said that. Let him go. Well, now, Captain, you're not going to let Humboldt break up a beautiful friendship, are you? Mr. Webb, it occurs to me that you may have purposely picked a fight with Humboldt and established the time of your arrival. Yeah. That's an idea. What? That house for me. Couldn't have been dead over half an hour. But I would like to know if this is the job of a professional crook or... The jewelry's gone. The fancy knife like that is not standard equipment for a second story man. This Bremer woman knew a lot of prominent people uh, socially. And I will immediately clear up this case before the citizens start blackening everybody. I thought you were still black in the last case. Mr. Attorney Joyce, this is Mr. Webb. How do you Mr. do? Attorney, that's from Dr. Right. Frome. Well, a pretty big case, huh? To bring out the DA personally? Did you have an appointment with Miss Bremer tonight? Captain about it. Said to come around 8. A little late, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I sure am. Plenty late. What were your relations with his friends? Very close friends, but don't overwork your imagination. What were you seeing her about? Handler Insurance. And Vincent Cushing had just given her an armful of jewelry and she wanted it covered. Cushing? Just huh? a minute, Webb. How do we know that you're telling the truth? You're no friend of Cushing. No, but you are. There's something that you kiddies ought to know. Alma told me she had a date about nine. If we only knew who she had that date with. I just told you Cushing gave her a ton of diamonds. You got a cigarette? You seem to be very much interested in this case, Mr. Webb. Yeah? Yeah, I certainly am. To most of you, that's just a body in there. Well, to me, it's Alma Bramer. And the skunk that did it is gonna burn. You needn't get so melodramatic about it. We all feel as badly as you. How are you, Joyce? How do you do, Mr. Cushing? I heard about it outside. I think it's rotten. Only a cheap cut sort of do a thing like this. Oh, Vincent, that's the barest thing. I was just telling them you were their best suspect. Mm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. I'll upset him. As far as I'm concerned, he's our number one suspect. He's the only one that knew about that jewelry that you gave Miss Bramer. I didn't give Miss Bramer any jewelry. You had a date with her tonight, didn't you? Well, not a date exactly. She wanted my advice about some securities. Oh, be covered. Take your dirty hands off me. We found him walking around outside the building. He said something about uh, wringing her skinny neck. Good work, Alder. Yeah, I'll wring her skinny neck. No. It isn't. Alma. Alma! No, oh, this is Alma. Alma, John. Found Mr. Godina parked around the corner. Said he was waiting for Mr. Cushing, but you told me... That... Well, the uh, suspects are piling up. Yeah. They're coming out of the woodwork now. You killed her. You were afraid you'd come back to me, Cushing. Hey, Eddie, you killed her! Why didn't you search him, O'Leary? Well, I thought Humboldt did it. Oh, 
I, I thought O'Leary did it. Yeah. Burke, bring the iodine. Give me that. Allow me. Hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Webb, it's only a scratch. Try to get upstairs. You're saying she wanted to stop Mr. Webb before it is too late. Too late? Yeah. <laughs> but what? Oh, now, wait a minute. You mean you suspected him of wanting to kill Miss Bremer? No. No, he wanted to make love to her. I was the one that wanted to kill her just because she's got a pound. Oh, Johnny. If you don't mind, I'd like to go home and have a doctor look at this. Well, we're holding everyone for questioning. Might I suggest that you concentrate on Mr. Webb? Why don't you lie low and you blow over? You know, I've been thinking. Whoever phoned us was up here first and might have stepped in that blood while it was still wet. Now, if there's a particle of it left on their shoes, our uh, chemist can find it. Look, Puss. He's wearing socks. Like the little pig that's been playing the market. All right, come on. Captain Graves will take you to headquarters for preliminary questioning. Well, in that case, uh, you know what I said to the lawyer? Now, see here, Webb, you're not going to turn this into a three ring circus. Oh, my dear Joyce, you can't find the face of a constitutional right. Humboldt, do me a favor, will you? Call up Samson at Chestnut 7878. Tell him to come down here and defend me against the district attorney. Oh, that's kindergarten stuff, man. Now, now, pushing. Surely I'm entitled to a pal, too, with you fangling around a rosy with Junior here. I'll go on ahead and drop these to the laboratory. Oh, Inspector. Half soles and new laces, not mine. <laughs> Got the news from Frown Peppy. I'm awful sorry about it. Thanks, Peter. Look, I brought all the habeas corpuses I could find and a Ouija board. Good. If I know my Cushing and Joyce, I'm right in the middle of a squeeze play. You? Come on, sit over here. You can see well. How'd the cupcake get mixed up in this? Uh, oh, never mind. Never mind. I'll find out firsthand. Mr. Frome is going to ask some questions. I would like to have them answered without the dubious benefit of Mr. Webb's uncalled for, unethical, and unfunny remarks. Has anyone here ever seen this knife before? Oh. Yes. Yes, Miss Seymour? Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Webb once had a paper cutter like that, but it's not the same, because his was a paper cutter. You're sure it's not the same? Mm, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure. Hmm? She's sure. There's one question I'd like to ask you, Mr. Cushing. Did you give Miss Bramer a costly diamond bracelet this morning? Uh, 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 no signals. Oh, of course not. That's absurd. Don't give us that. You quarreled with Alma Bramer last night. You gave her the jewelry this morning. Tonight you could have killed her in a fit of jealous rage. Everyone that knows you can testify to your violent temper. Well, yes, that's right, because one time the club, Mr. Christian, got so mad at Mr. Green. Quiet. So vain stood out in his neck. Gentlemen, I'd like to make a suggestion. Mr. Webb, you may as well keep your mouth shut because we're not going to believe one word you say against Mr. Cushing. Uh, Mr. District Attorney, if you refuse to hear the testimony of any homicide suspect, you're violating the federal constitution, the state laws, and local ordinance number 482. Paragraph 4. Thank you. Any questions? If I wasn't drunk, they never would have caught me. Give that man some black coffee and keep working on him. We may get a confession. Now, Mr. Taylor, you are the ex-husband of the deceased. Do you know anyone near to her who uh, might have had a motive for this killing? No, I don't. May I embellish that? Mr. Taylor resented paying his ex-wife the $100,000 settlement that I obtained for her. That's not true. Mr. Taylor needs cash. He could have threatened her with a loan. She refused. He killed her. She has fresh scratches on his cheeks. They could have come from a nail file. And I wonder if any of you smart kiddies noticed 
Sit down with nail files. I've been drinking. I fell down and cut myself. Put your fall on the manicure set. Who's conducting this inquiry? The police department or this ambulance chaser? Sit down. Oh. How about the donut? Taylor was always jealous of Cushing. He threatened them both last night at the Riviera. We were all witness to that. Is that true? No. No. I think you'd better get Mr. Webb a cup of black coffee. Well, you're just a bunch of big sippers because I heard him myself. Wait a minute, young lady. Three people in this room have testified. Oh, hey, will you look what you're doing? So sorry, old man. How well did you know the deceased? Pretty well. I know she spent a lot of time with Webb. I'm sure you'll have something to say. I certainly have. Well, the demon well knew well enough to hate her insides because she turned him down for Cushing. <laughs> I've never been so flattered in all my life. <laughs> you don't have to laugh so loud, Pete. I don't think you killed her. Gentlemen, I happen to know Mr. Godina pretty well. And I don't think he'd try to tackle a full-grown woman. I'm the only with a knife. There. Look out. Kill a girl. My dear. How? Will you keep off my feet? I'm so sorry. Go on, beat it. Yeah. yeah. How about another donut? That man's faking. Wake him up. <laughs> no tonic. And one silver lightly. This thing is turned into a free ring. Please report, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, they found blood on one of Webb's shoes. But it's not Miss Bramer's blood. The report is definite about that. Blood is blood. And East disease. And West is West, and never the twain shall meet. Quiet! This particular blood is from Mr. Cushing's arm wound. They checked with the bandage. I'll burn the shoes in the morning. This investigation has turned into a three-ring circus. Two tickets, please. Get that man out of here. Uh, come on, Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't push, don't, don't push. I stand on my constitutional rights. Now, I'm going to let you all go for the time being. All right, you can all take your shoes. Ow! My dear fellow, I hope you're not hurt. Why, you... None of you will attempt to leave town. If you do, I'll have you picked up and booked. Johnny, 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 do you know what I think? What? I think whoever did it just didn't it. Slow down, puss. Right back where we started. All we have left to work on is the knife. Where is it? Gone. Saloon of the cowboy with a heart that's so good and a true. Hey. Did you double check on those figures? Did I ever let you down? I'd rather not answer that. Old Scott appreciates this. I'll never get the paint out from under my nails. You all have to make sacrifices for the good of the community. You to help the senator present the simple and honest facts. Say when. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Couldn't kill that many people in a year with the bubonic play. Don't get technical. What was that for? I got a little paint left over in the bush. Yeah? There's a guy here to see you. Oh, a guy, huh? Well, let's see. I paid my rent, paid my tailor. You're supposed to tell me if I'm getting warm. Very funny. He said he's from the citizens. The good side of the press. I better talk to him. Yeah. Thought you wanted to see me. She's cuter. I never get a tumble around here anymore. Got time for a few questions, Webb? I can answer the first one. I didn't kill Alma Bramer. The News Gazette thinks you did. Cushing set that type. You mean Cushing's trying to protect someone close? Oh, yeah, very close. Himself. Hmm. Did you tell the police that? Sure, I told them. I had a far away look in their eye. They wouldn't hold him if he walked in and confessed. Senator Scott sent us. In there. The editor keeps banging his head against the stone wall of corruption, but he's running out of heads. Start hinting that it's cushy. 
That's your bombshell. Yeah, that's swell. You light the fuse, but it goes off in our face. But I'll see how the editor feels about it. Webb, you're a one-man war, but if you get to be no political boss, keep me in mind, will you? I've always had a yen to be police commissioner, so I can leave my car in the no parking space. Miss Ada, put him down for commissioner. How do you spell commissioner? Well, don't blame me if I get stuck. Little missionary work with the citizens. I got two derbies and a great fedora. Fedora only counts six. This may be a little bit off the subject, chum, but did you kill Elmer? I told you I got a note warning me. I remember about the note, and I remember it didn't sound very convincing. Well, maybe you had your own reasons. Yeah? There are some cops here, and it doesn't surprise me. Captain Graves and Inspector Frost. It's an unexpected pleasure. Hope you don't mind if we take a look around. We have a search warrant, but we thought... Oh, you're always welcome. Of course, you have to take pot luck. All right, boys, how about it? What do you suppose they're looking for? I think it's a treasure hunt where they're supposed to bring back a couple of lawyers. No, I know what it is. What? They're looking for a K-N-I-F-E. Like to try? Mm -hmm. Come on. No, thanks. No. You're cold. You're getting warm. Have, uh, have uh, you ever seen one of these? Oh, <laughs> would, uh, would you like to try one? It's been a long, hard search. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, no, thanks. OK. Oh, we have some sliding panels, secret trap doors, false bottom, and transparent windows in my partner's office. Wouldn't you like to see them? See if they can find anything in the other office. Think they can find the other office? We're sorry to bother you, Mr. Webb. That's the trouble with these fortune tellers. You can't depend on them. I just lost the best years of my life. Oh, gee, Puss. That was a dirty trick, but I had it to. Puss, I'll get you a barrel of charge account. I'll make it up to you in a hundred ways. Honest, I will, Puss. I've seen everything now. I don't know what you're talking about. No, Puss. Think of it, gentlemen. The lives of more than 3,000 men, women, and children snuffed out in the past 12 months. Gentlemen, false figures. Figments of a fertile and unscrupulous imagination. Senator Scott has the floor. Figures are sometimes unreliable. Consequently, we will give you more than mere statistics. The truth in asphalt 
Yeah. Everything but performing fleas. <laughs> really, gentlemen. Order, please. Senator Scott has the floor. We have here 12 samples of paving in various other states and a sample of our own. This is an official testing machine. Pressure can be exerted by this machine equal to the wear of millions of cars a year passing over the pavement. To demonstrate, Oklahoma. Six point six pressure. Translated, this paving is good for 27 years. Good, morning, good show. I underestimated Mr. Webb. And now a sample of our own state. Good for seven years. Unable to stand up under the wear of 10 million cars. Not including uh, bicycle scooters and roller skates. <laughs> I think it's about time Mr. Webb was picked up for murder. They're quick away. Uh-oh. I know. Spring cleaning. No, this is getting a little monotonous. Maybe we ought to leave it like this the next time they'll straighten it up, huh? Have to look. Gone. Do you think maybe we offended somebody in the magicians' union? What is it? Termites? Crushing, I think. Practically the same thing. Well, if this is your idea of a funny joke, you can just clean it up yourself. My secretary. Hey, you know. You guys have overlooked something. What? The one person who had the best motive for killing Alma Bremer. The best and oldest motive. Jealousy. You know, I'm getting just a little bit weary of this stupid jealousy of yours. You didn't treat her like that. No, you didn't. Or did you? Maybe you did kill her. You crush everything you're tired of. Why don't you kill me? Oh, no, shut up. You've left me nothing to live for. Go on, kill me. Or I'll do it myself. What, again? I told you there was always a loaded revolver in the desk drawer. But, Mother... Leave us alone for a moment. Leave us alone. You better go, dear. Have you completely lost your reason? Murderer. Murderer. You hear me? You're a murderer. Why must you always believe the vicious lies Webb has put in the papers about me? You, my wife. Your wife. You've killed me. You've killed her. You've even killed her father. Yes, I know all about it. You killed her father. When she found out, you killed her. What did you do with that clipping? What did you do with that clipping? I'm saving him the
Just off there, pal. Out of condition? Well, I'm sorry. Miss Cushing, I presume. Move over just a little. I can't breathe. I suppose now that you're out of finishing school, you're doing all of your father's second story work, huh? This is my own idea. You see, uh, the things the citizen has been praying about him made Mother very unhappy. Mm -hmm. So you decided to stop all the news right at its source, huh? Mm-hmm. Your dad did leave something worthwhile about 30, didn't he? Oh, so, uh, by the way, uh, how old are you? Me too. Why? No, nothing. Oh, would you have a cigarette? Don't mind if I do. Mr. Webb, you sure got an unusual technique. Don't bother. I'll get a cab. Good night, Johnny. Night, sir. Wait a minute. I just came to see you to tell you that I'm not going to see you anymore. And you can just stop chasing me because I wouldn't look at you if you came to me on your hands and feet. Good morning, miss. Mr. Webb ain't in this morning. He went to the office. Yes, I know. I just wanted to return this. Are you feeling better this morning, miss? Thank you. I never felt better in my life. Some folks think it's too violent, but it sure is successful technique. Good morning, Miss Ader. All right, so here's your own phone. routine. I'm sure you can explain all this uh, very readily. You get the idea, Mr. Webb? Sure. The whole picture comes to me at once, including the frame. Let me see. Was it Aesop or Mr. Godina that said, uh, keep your nose clean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we got you, Webb. Your secretary found out that you killed Alma Bramer, so you, you silenced her permanently. No use looking there. He won't find his fingerprints. He's too smart for that. <laughs> The trouble with you is, Joyce, you think you're Dick Tracy. And right before my very eyes, why, he dragged that poor girl through the lobby by the hair of her head, and why, he'd even beat her into a great big pole. Yeah, that's Johnny. He'd rather beat a woman into a big pole to smoke a good cigar or anything. Oh. Well, how are you, Johnny? Hi, Russ. You know my psychopathic friends here, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Puss. You keep your hellos to yourself, thank you. Well, Miss Seymour? What were those interesting things you were saying about Mr. Webb a few moments ago? It was nothing at all. I was just saying that he had a battle with his secretary last night. And Be careful what you're saying. Well, I don't try to deny it because it was your secretary. Undoubtedly, Mr. Webb has another alibi. Now, you're going to be surprised, Papa. Now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to at the News Gazette. Hmm. He's writing the cooking column. Pardon me. Come on, give him a break. Hold a card for him. Thanks. Oh, hi, Mr. Webb. Hi, Shirley. How's everything? Okay. Wife had a little touch of the flu, but she's over it now. Oh. Ed, Miss Seymour has some very important information. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'll take care of her. Yeah. yeah. All right, get him out of here. Take a good look, Webb. Maybe you'll learn. Listen, Joyce. I like a good ulterior motive as well as the next man. But you're going a little too far. Unfortunately, Mr. Webb, I must do my duty. Let's go. Mr. 
Webb. I am T. Hemingway Collins, Secretary of the Citizens Better Government League. Delighted, Mr. Collins. Yes. Our league is convinced that you are the man to fight corruption in our fair city, the graft and crime that is allowed to flourish by Vincent Cushing, Senator Beery, and District Attorney Joyce. Well, I'm sorry you haven't met the District Attorney, Mr. Collins, Mr. Joyce. How do you do? How do you do? I got it! Lucky Judge White owes me $25 from that last poker oh, game. Oh, habeas corpus, eh? All yeah. right, Webb. One of these days, you're going to run out of judges. Sure, I know. It's Halloween. You're a spook, and you're going to scare me. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Webb, you are quite sure that is the district attorney? Well, that's what they laughingly call him around the News Gazette. <laughs> You better mobilize your defenses, Daddy. It's another five dollar touch. <laughs> Certainly, my dear. You probably don't remember me. I was manner of the citizen before your bombshell went off in my face. Miss Felicity, Mr. Webb, Mr. Sampson. And, uh, kind of friend. How do you do? She's your new secretary. Yes. And the agency sent me. <laughs> and, uh, can you type? I've always wanted a secretary that could type. You know how to bake a saw and a cake? That'll come in handy. You spell commissioner? Uh, C-O-M... Splendid. Splendid. Don't overdo it. Darling, it's not today. Give me a coat. Oh, you haven't got a coat. Well, I'll buy you one. Come on, I'll show you around the factory here. I know how to spell commissioner. Why that light sloppy mood? What's happened to the old man or that hard boy reporter? He was fired for hanging out with a couple of murderers and getting the paper out on a limb. Get a load of that. Mm-hmm. Now, that reads the same as the news of the Gazette. Uh-oh. Get that, Russ. The knife has vanished from the police laboratory. I could have stopped sleeping with my windows closed. I wonder if they make steel pajamas. Matter? With positive proof that Cushing is a rotten apple in the political barrel to get you your miserable position back for you? The answer is obvious, yes. Punch into the office in the morning. Your time card will be in the rack. Maybe I've been a skeptic from birth. Nothing new against the forces of evil, huh, Pappy? Nope. We'll get something. Oh, oh, oh. All right, but they laughed at Marconi, too. I don't know why. I didn't think his stuff was funny. Russ? The murder candidates have narrowed down to Cushing and Godina for my dough. How would the police know that Ada was murdered if they hadn't been tipped off? Well, that looks to me like the good old Framer rule. Mike. Think you still know how to open the safe? I don't have to know how. I just blow on them. Uh, I'm convinced. You, uh, you wouldn't be taking a Cushing safe. Give it to me. Look at that. Now liquidate this. In the South River. Ah, our Mr. Webb. I know you'd like to meet our committee. Uh, Miss Dottering, Mrs. Rosencrantz, and Mrs. Gildersleeve. Those crusaders for clean government. Yes, uh, you ladies will have to excuse us now. We're going out and make arrangements to rob a safe. cheated Cushing. I could have kicked that safe open with my stocking feet. Sure, I know. And besides, I was afraid the murderer might come after you next. And I don't want to be almost a widow because my mother was almost a widow once when my father almost died. It was Friday and he got a fishbone caught right in his throat. Nothing here yet, Johnny. It's a joy sure crossing the teeth, funny. You know, I heard if you cross your teeth a certain way, you're going to go insane before you're 21. You reek Here. What's your hero? Gee, I like that, but my goodness, what was it? For finding this? Well, gosh, I'll find you lots more. What a headline this is going to make for the citizen. Joyce Stills Police Department to Vincent Cushing. That'll hang Cushing to the well-known hickory limb. It's his cute. Must be a grocery list. I'll bet you Mr. Cushing does all of his wife shopping. My gosh. Something special. 
ambition like that? Oh, it certainly is. Just what is your ambition? To clean up the state, get rid of Cushing, find the murderer, avoid getting yourself hung or standing there playing post office. This, my friend, is a slot machine profit for last month. And a one-way ticket to the big house for Mr. Cushing, Mr. Godina, and the district attorney. And Senator Berry. You know, it's going to be so easy to put that amendment through. Now it's almost a sin to take that $100,000 fee. Tell me something else, Jim. I made a promise. Now that Cushing's power is gone, the John Adams won't be afraid to go after the murderer. That proves that the mapping was done by one of Cushing's mouth. That's very significant. The Godina's cut was less than half after Alma's death. That proves Cushing had something on him that's liable to be murdered. Look, John, if I'm not too indelicate, where's this going to get you if it don't work? Mad as kids have to eat, don't they? I smell victory. Congratulations on the accuracy of your smeller. Wait, don't say anything till you know who I am. Who I am? I'm Matter, the old hard-boiled reporter whose babies have taken up eating again. You remember him? Aladdin, the guy with a magic lantern. Morning, boy. Hi, Inspector. Inspector, huh? You don't keep up with things, Webb. Congratulations are in order. All right, congratulations. You got him. You're perhaps the DA, the commissioner, the mayor, are all three. As commissioner, my first official duty is an unpleasant one, inasmuch as your anti-Joyce campaign was responsible for my promotion. So, um, you're trying to tell me in a very subtle way that I'm under arrest. Webb, I'm really very grateful. Oh, now, wait a minute, girl. Don't go get my violin. But the News Gazette has been screaming that you're the murderer, and you are the only logical one who could have killed your secretary. So, I've got to take you in. Well, now, wait a minute, Tom. I can't go to jail now. I gotta have a few hours to figure this all out. You're here, Inspector, because Smelly Annie, I mean, a certain friend of mine, had a dream where the but, commissioner is the murderer and you were the corn fitter. Oh, those dreams have got you slap happy. Mm, all right, then. Look, I want to show you the dress I got. It's wonderful, and I'm going to exchange it in the morning. Come on, corn fritter. Let's erase ourselves from the domestic scene. Okay. I'll expect you at headquarters in the morning. You can sleep in your own bed tonight. It's softer. And besides, you'll probably want to spend the evening with that girl of yours. But don't leave town. You're on your honor. Thanks. Did you tell him I was your girl? Yes, people say a lot of foolish things in an emergency. You know what? I'm in a spot. You ain't no place else, Bevy. Mr. Webb's a resident? Yeah, wait a minute. Yes? John, I'm worried about you. I just met Graham, the new DA. Now, he's honest, and he's convinced that you did the murder. Now, something might turn up. Yeah. Yes, I'm going down in the morning. Oh, uh, what about the amendment? You no, know, we vote on it tomorrow. You know, a lot of the boys around here still read the News Gazette. Okay, sir. Now you haven't got enough trouble. Call me in for the peace conference. Now, please. Don't you please me. I wouldn't um, take you back if you came to me on your hands and feet. And this time, I mean it. No, Johnny, there were a couple of other things that could have happened to you today. You could have stubbed your toe, or you could have got a splinter under your fingernail. Well, the way I feel, a good run with every nail wouldn't make a difference. What's James handwriting? How do you like that? Look. Read it. Mr. Foreman out of Cirilla's pocket. Alma's father was murdered, too. Look, Alma had this clipping. Cushing discovered it. Now, before Alma died, Godina's cut on the slot machine was just as much as Cushing's. But after the murder, Cushing paid him less than half as much, and this is the reason why. And I'll tell you something else. That throwing knife definitely came from Texas. 
How long would it take you to pack your fake toothbrush and charter a plane? From Morganville, Texas? From Morganville, Texas. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the first prize if we get to Morganville and it's file old Vance brainstorm? We stand a chance to lose a good night's sleep. Well, so if it's a brainstorm, I make the best deal in the morning. Okay, chum, I'll get the plane. About two miles down the road. We'll have this back by one o'clock. Thanks! Say, Johnny, just what is this cemetery routine? And look, isn't this about the time that Mr. Holmes usually tells Watson what's going on? Okay. Whoever killed Alma's father came from this town. Subsequently left here and committed the other two murders, right? Quite so, quite so. Hey, I do a pretty good Watson, don't I? But the murderer did come from this town. Pretty much of a sense, he's got relatives buried here. So we look for the family name on the tombstone. Cushing, Godina, a Taylor. Yeah, but wouldn't the murderer have changed his name after knocking off Alma's old man? You know, Russ, that's a strange thing. Criminals seldom change their names completely. They retain their mother's maiden name or their father's given name. I don't know whether it's a matter of sentiment or pride, but they always retain some part of the old name. Yeah. Uh-oh. This is it, I guess. Just a minute, will you? You know something, Watson? What is it, chump? I'm throwing in the towel. This guy's too tough for me. Just an old cowboy with a heart of silver and a 
But he learned that true love the meaning in the eyes of heaven so the truth. And on Wednesday he reached the ferry. He stopped. Hi, Beethoven. How's the gladiator? Well, a little clicky around the hinges. Say, didn't you promise Frommy you'd be at headquarters this morning? Mm-hmm. Well, I got some ideas I want to talk to you about. About the murder? Don't tell me you're going to take back the towel you just threw in. No, I found some more pieces that fit. I'm all ears. For us, I was wondering how the murderer knew we were going to the cemetery last night. Well, there's, there's Smelly Andy. She's psychic. No. No, none of the suspects knew our destination, and Ann didn't know. You know, Johnny, she wouldn't be a bad kid to have across the breakfast table from you every morning. Oh, no. No, you've forgotten the web pledge. I'm going to remain free from foreign entanglements. Why did you throw that thing on me last night? Did it hurt? You may have had good reasons for the other two, but... I'm sorry, Johnny. I just tried to scare you off, that's all. Funny, now that I look back, all the things that pointed to you trying to frame me with a knife in the drawer. But it wasn't a frame, Johnny. It just backfired that way. I wanted you to think it was Cushing so you'd get him before I had to. Why? What did you have against Cushing? After Alma, Johnny, look, he got all of her stuff from the bank, the newspaper clippings, too. And you stabbed a girl in the back just because she had a newspaper clip? She was trying to blackmail me. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. I know how you felt about Alma, but believe me, she's gone an awful long way down that road since you knew her. Go on. You know, after 15 years of me doing what's right, she finally recognized me as the guy that knocked off her old man in a saloon fight. Honest Johnny was an awful skunk. He pulled a knife on me. But so happened I was faster than he was, but the jury couldn't see it that way. I did a Houdini. And Ada? That was hardly the way to get rid of her. I couldn't give her two weeks' notice, could I? She saw me putting the knife on your desk. Don't look at me like that, will you, Johnny? Thou shalt not kill, huh? My government spent a lot of dough teaching me how to kill. For three years, I murdered guys I didn't have anything against. Finally, when I had a reason, it just came kind of easy, I guess. I keep thinking how you gave it to Alma. I could have let it turn me in. It was that waiting, Johnny, those long, drawn-out court trials, waiting for the jury to come in, then the best of them, waiting and more waiting. Johnny, I'm not afraid to die, but it's got to be quicker than the legal way. Well, that's that, I guess. Johnny, look. Would you like to let me get to another state? Just for old time's sake, huh? For old time's sake? You bet I like this. You'll never know how much, pal. But I don't think you understood when I said I was fond of Elmer. I'm sorry.
made stuff, Webb. The girl told us about him. Gee, Mr. Webb. Nice work, Webb. Is he dead? You got the lights. Mr. Mind, Mind you're a champ all around. The amendment went through. Joyce, Cushing, and Godina are being measured for strife. Why was that guy dead? Get out! Get out, all of you. Feel better now? Sure, a lot better. Well, then I guess I'll be getting along. Yeah. Huh? But before I go, I want to thank you for everything. If it hadn't been for you, I might never have given this fellow a second what thought. What fellow? What a college fellow. What you said. Oh, it isn't that he isn't handsome. Six foot two or no. Blue eyes, cute little dimples. And we thought that just because he finished... Now you listen to me, boys. How do I know who this moron is? I'd even be a kidnapper or something. I know a lot of kidnappers that got blue eyes. No, no, he's, he's college boy. But I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to let you throw yourself with the first good-looking halfback that comes along. Might even have insanity in his family. Mr. Webb! Stop calling Mr. Webb. I don't care if he's seven foot two. A sophomore can't open a minute charge accounts for you. Besides, you don't need a college boy. You need somebody to depend on. You need a lawyer or something. <laughs> Do they always ask that question? About, do you promise to obey? How do I know? I don't get married every day. Mr. Webb, I'm a victim of your technique. 